How to perform a tape test and proper mold cleaning options. Composite molds can be made from a variety of materials, including polyester or epoxy tooling gel coats, and resins, tempered glass, urethane and epoxy tool boards, aluminum, stainless steel, and carbon steel. They are all considered non-porous, meaning they won't absorb a gel coat or resin during the manufacturing process. Regardless of the mold material, it is essential that the mold surface be clear of any surface contaminants. This will provide the optimal surface for the release system to bond to and minimize surface profiles or issues that can cause rework on the composite part. If a new or reconditioned mold is put into service, a tape test is required to create a baseline for any potential surface contaminants on the mold. A tape test simulates relative adhesion. If a mold is clean, the tape test should aggressively stick to the mold surface and provide a greater resistance when slowly pulled off. Once the release has been applied and properly cured, the tape should stick to the mold surface much less and be significantly easier to remove. If the tape comes off a new or reconditioned mold very easily, it indicates that there is something left on the surface that is preventing adhesion. This will cause problems when using a semi-permanent release system since the mold surface needs to be completely inert for the sealer and the release agent to bond to it properly. Using a mold cleaner is often that necessary to, to remove surface contaminants. Perform another tape test after cleaning to see if the tape sticks aggressively to the mold surface. Masking tapes are the best tapes since they have good adhesion. This includes painter's tapes, but it's important to be consistent with tape tests. Packaging tapes, duct tapes, etc., are not recommended. All right, now we're gonna clean with our can stick mold cleaner. So typically with the mold cleaner, I put it in a smaller container, makes it a little bit easier to use. And now we're gonna wipe down our mold. And remember, mold cleaner is not gonna get everything off the surface. Uh, the only way to do that is with some sort of abrasion or buffing compound, uh, but this will get any last contaminants off. We did abrade this mold, so now we're just getting any residue off here, and we will have clean, inert surface uh, for our next step. All right, now that our mold is clean, we're going to perform a tape test. And typically with the tape test, I like to use a blue uh, painter's tape, something about an inch wide. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull off just a few inches of this. Leave yourself some room at the end here uh, to pull up. You don't wanna be nicking at it with your, your nails or anything like that. And you can notice that the tape stuck pretty aggressively. So that means we have a clean mold, there's nothing on it. We're ready to begin uh, conditioning this mold. When a release agent has been properly applied and cured, perform another tape test to determine if the surface energy on the mold has been significantly lowered. A tape test is conducted in the same way every time. If the release agent is well cured, the tape resistance upon removal should be drastically easier compared to a tape test performed on a clean mold that you just saw. If not, this indicates there may be something with, wrong with the release agent. When comparing ease of removal on a tape test with a paste wax or a semi-permanent, the tape will always remove easier on a mold using a semi-permanent. Most paste waxes contain silicone, but some do not. A tape test on a paste wax with a silicone will always release easier than a tape test on a non-silicone wax. A little bit about mold fouling. When molding with polyester resins, the greatest contributor to mold fouling is styrene monomer. Styrene monomer is a reactive diluent found in UPR resins and gel coats, including orsothalic, isothalic, DCPD, or vinyl ester. UPR resins or gel coats contain anywhere between 25 to 45% styrene monomer depending on their formula. After initiation and application of the gel coat or resin, when the UPR is in its exotherm phase, a small quantity of styrene will leach out of the gel coat or resin and attach itself to the mold surface. After several molding cycles, the styrene monomer will become optically visible as a dull white spot on the mold surface. Styrene buildup contributes to a lack of gloss on the mold and will transfer to the part while also creating a surface profile that makes it more difficult to remove the part. The best way to combat styrene monomer buildup is to clean the mold with quality mold cleaner before the buildup is visible. A quality mold cleaner contain contains toluene, which is the most effective remover of polymerized styrene. The greater degree of the styrene buildup, the more cleaner and physical effort is required to remove it. In worst case scenarios, sanding, bead blasting, or dry ice blasting to the mold surface is required. 
acetone typically makes for a poor mold cleaner. Although liquid styrene monomer has been used for years to remove polymerized styrene, it also causes polyester and vinyl ester based tooling gel coats to become soft over repeated cleanings. It causes them to lose their gloss and leads to premature tooling gel coat degradation. A quality mold cleaner will remove any wax-based release agent, which means a reapplication of the wax system is required. Conversely, using a mold cleaner on a mold that has a used semi-permanent system will only remove a portion of the release system. Mold cleaners themselves will not remove the entire semi-permanent system, only abrasion will do that. In this case, only one application of release agent needs to be reapplied after washing. Remove the entire semi-permanent release system requires abrasion, as I mentioned. Compounding or sanding will remove everything if the mold needs reconditioned. Now that the mold is conditioned with release agent and sealer, we're gonna do another tape test to see if we can begin making parts. Again, tape test is a great indication of slip on the mold. So as you notice there, the tape came off extremely easy. The mold is seasoned and conditioned well, and you can begin making parts. Thank you.